Before we start doing anything, we want to design our database schema and set up our database. So here I have a products table that represents each of the product and an orders table that represents an order that a user makes. So here's a simplified table of how our data in an orders table will look like. And you can think of an order as your shopping cart. So an order has many items, but how are you going to represent how many of each item an order has? And if you think carefully, you're going to realize that the two tables are not enough to represent these items. That's where an extra table called order items comes into place. We have a one-to-many relationship between an orders table and an order items table. And in case you're not too familiar with one-to-many relationship between tables, you can think of this as one order having many items. And as you can see here, the many side, which is our order items table, has the foreign key, the order ID foreign key that references the ID of the order. And then we have a one-to-one -one relationship between an order items table and a products table. And to help you visualize how an order items table is going to look like, we're going to have an order ID foreign key that references the ID of an order that tells us which order this item is part of and a product ID foreign key that references the ID of a product. And the quantity field of each item is going to tell us how many of these products the user has in its order. And then as we move on, we can add more tables like a user's table and associate that with an order or a payment results table and associate that with an order as well. But so that we don't overcomplicate this, I'm going to start off with the first three tables, the products, orders, and the order items table for the time being. And now that we have an idea on how our database schema is going to look like, let's go ahead and define our MySQL tables. So I'm going to use this website called dbdiagram.io to create my diagram. And this website is pretty handy because it allows us to define our tables and export this to MySQL. And this is going to generate all the MySQL commands that we need to create our tables. And DB Diagram has its own syntax to define these tables. And I already have these queries prepared to save us some time. So we have a products table, an orders table, and an order items table. So let me just rearrange these. And we are just going to start off with these three tables and add more as we go. And then if you click on this export tab and export to MySQL, this is going to generate a file for us. And then we can use these create table queries to create our tables. But in order to run these create table queries, of course, we need to have MySQL running on our computer. So to install MySQL, you could actually look up on how to install MySQL and follow these MySQL installation guide to install this on your computer. However, that would mean that it will have to manually install all its dependencies and it might also take up more space than necessary. So here we want to run MySQL as a container. And for those of you who are not familiar with Docker image and container, I'm going to go over these concepts real quick. But because I know there are a lot of excellent videos on YouTube that go over these Docker concepts, I'm just going to go over the minimum we need to know to continue with the course. So we have an image that is a lightweight executable package. And you can think of this as a blueprint or a template of the package that you want to run. And when we actually execute the Docker command to Docker run that image, that image becomes a container. So here's an example of some Docker commands that we're going to be using to download and run our MySQL container. And I'm going to break this down for you. First, we have a Docker pull that really just downloads the MySQL image. And then when we do Docker run, we specify the name of our container and our port mapping. And I know port mapping is a confusing concept for those starting out. So I have this simple diagram that shows a MySQL container on our host. And when we say host, that just represents our computer or the machine that you are trying to run this on. And MySQL runs on port 3306 by default, but we won't be able to access the MySQL container without any port mapping. So when you run this container, you want to define this port mapping so that we can access the MySQL container through a port. In this case, we are specifying 3306 as well. So with this port mapping enabled, we can access MySQL container through localhost 3306. And if we actually specify a different port, say 33060, then we're going to be able to access the MySQL container 
through localhost 33060. And then we have an environment variable to specify the password of our root user and the deflect to run this container in a detached mode. And lastly, the name of our image. And here are some other commands that we're going to be using later. So we have docker ps to show running containers, docker stop to stop a running container, docker remove to remove the container, and lastly docker rmi to remove a docker image. So the first thing you would have to do is to install docker desktop on Mac, Windows, or Linux if you're on a different machine. And once you have that installed, you can come to docker hub to download the image you want. So for every image, we have the name of the image as well as a tag associated with that image. And once you confirm that your Docker is running from up here, you can open up your terminal and try to pull the image that you need. In our case, we're going to be pulling MySQL 8.4. Once that image has been pulled, you can run that container like I showed you earlier by doing Docker run. And you can confirm that the container is running by doing docker ps and as you can see we have a container named ecom mysql that has a port mapping from 3306 to 3306 so now we can access mysql through port 3306 so to connect to mysql i have an app called table plus installed on my computer but feel free to use mysql workbench or any other interface of your preference but if you're using table plus you can click on this plus sign Choose MySQL, name your connection. Your host can remain as is, same for the port. The username is gonna be root, and the password is gonna be password for us. We can leave the database name empty for now and test the connection. And now let's try to connect. And to create our tables, we first need a database. And we can create our own database by clicking on this SQL. And we can simply say create database and name this however you want. So once you create a database, you can click on this icon to access your ecom database. And once we're inside the ecom database, we can copy that create table queries that we generated earlier, paste this here, and do command enter to run these queries. So these tables are created once we refresh and you're gonna see how we have the products, orders, and the order items table created for us. There's one last thing we need to go over in this episode because during development, we don't wanna be manually creating these tables and dropping these tables once we're done and bring them back up again. And if we have any changes in the table, we're not keeping track of any of these changes. For example, if we add a new column here, we're not gonna know who added it and when they were added. So to keep track of our database table changes like how we do on GitHub, we can create database migration files. For Go, we can use Golang Migrate. So if you come to this Golang Migrate page, come to this Getting Started page, it tells you how you can create migration files and run these migrations. You can install and run this migrate command on your machine, or you can also run migrate as a Docker container if you look at this Docker usage example. And because we just learned Docker, I think it is a good practice to try running migrate on a Docker container. So let's first create our directory to work on. So I'm gonna create a directory called ecom and open this in VS Code. Once you're inside VS Code, you can click Command J to open a terminal. And then here I'm going to do docker run dash it dash dash remove and so on. I already have this command stored in my history. But the last thing we want to add here is the name of our migration file. So the front part here really is just a docker command. And the second part here is the actual migrate command. So we create our migration file, and this is the command that we saw earlier in the migrate getting started page, where we create a migration file, specify the extension to be SQL, specify the output directory, add the sequence flag to auto-generate the sequence, 
and lastly the name of your migration file. So we are running docker run in an interactive mode and we want to remove this container once we actually run this command and we run this in a host network and we mount the volume to persist the data that's generated inside the container. So when we run this command, this will actually create these two files inside the container and that will be persisted to our host machine here, meaning they are really just copied to our host machine. So if we don't mount this volume, these files are only going to be available inside this container and not persisted to our host machine here. So each create command is going to create two different migration files for us. One is up.sql, the other is down.sql. So up.sql is the file where we put the queries to create our tables. So these are the queries that we generated earlier. And then inside the down migration file, we're going to add queries to drop the tables. And one thing I want to highlight here is that the order that you drop the table matters. So you want to drop this table order items that has a foreign key reference to another table. So we want to make sure we drop this order items table before we drop the orders and the products table. So once you define your up file as well as a down file, you can run the migrate up command or the down command as described in this instruction here. So here is an example of a migrate up command where you specify your database URL as well as the path to your migration files. And actually before I run this up command, let me restart my MySQL container. So as I've shown you earlier in the slides, you can do docker ps to see what container is running and you can do docker stop if any of the container is running. And once you stop your container, your docker ps is not going to show you anything. But when you do docker ps a, you're going to see a MySQL container is still there. So I want to remove this container like that. And then I can run my MySQL container again. I can confirm the container is running with docker ps. And since we just restarted our container, it's not going to have the database we created earlier anymore. And instead of opening the table plus app and creating the database here like this, I want to show you a way to interact with the MySQL container directly to create the database. So you can do that by using the docker exec command, run this in an interactive mode and you specify the name of your container. And then what comes after here is the actual command that you want to run. So this is a MySQL command. You specify the username as well as a password, followed by these three greater than signs and the command that you actually want to run inside double quotes. And once you run that, that's going to give you a quick warning because I am specifying the password on the command line interface like that, but you can ignore that for now. And now that we have created our database, we can now run our migrate command to actually run the up command. So I already have this command stored in my history again, but here I am specifying the path to my migration files followed by my database URL here. So this is just a specific database URL format where you specify the SQL driver that you're using, followed by your username, password, at TCP, and where your MySQL is running, followed by a slash and the name of the database. So if you named your database something else, what you have here is going to be something else. And lastly, we have this up command. So when we enter, that's going to run our migrate up file. So this should have created all these tables here. So let's open up table plus and confirm that. I'm going to go into ecom database. And as you can see, these tables have been created. 
And if you want to bring all of those tables down, all you have to do is run the down command, say yes. And that's going to apply all the down migration to bring down all the tables you have. So it's going to drop all the tables here. And once we refresh, you're going to see all the tables have been dropped. So what these migration files allow us to do is keep track of the database table changes we have. So in the future, for example, we want to add users table. We can run this add users table, create migration command, and that's going to create two extra migration files for us. And inside this up file that we just created, we can add this queries to create the table and actually alter the table orders to add the user ID and the foreign key reference as you can see here. And if you run the migrate up command again, that's going to apply all the migration files we have without having to manually create the table, modify them and keep track of those table changes. So that is all I have for this episode. Hopefully now we can get started with Go to start querying MySQL with SQL X and so on. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you all for watching.